Hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is a platform that encourages civic engagement through conversations that educate, enlighten, and inspire. We are live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook page. And for those who are watching us live, you do have the opportunity to send us questions and we can ask our guests on the air by sending them to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Today's show is pretty exciting. We have one of my friends, um, Philip Lemoyne, a cinematographer of, and owner of Supreme Video Productions. I have to slow myself down sometimes, so I end up stuttering. But we are going to be talking about creating useful content for online mediums. So Philip, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Man, you crushed that intro too. Good job. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, thanks, man. But tell our viewers about yourself. Um, so my name's Philip. I'm originally from California. Um, I moved here in, two, actually I, I lived here for a few years in middle school and high school. And then I uh, moved back here in 2009 to um, finish my degree over at UH. And I'm a full-time cinematographer. Okay, and you are the owner of Supreme Video Productions. Tell us about that business. What do you do? So I originally started my business in 2010, um, focused mainly on weddings and events, but I'll pretty much film anything. Um, at that point, when I first started out, um, I was really um, just kind of getting the business started and noticed that, you know, weddings in Hawaii was so you know, so it's a wedding destination location. So it was so easy to uh, get into the market and, um, you know, just start shooting weddings. So I've been doing that uh, full time since 2010, but we do other projects, um, commercial shoots, um, corporate events, a lot of event coverage, um, social media content creation, and then we'll even do some like internal videos for businesses and uh, that sort of thing. So anything that needs video will pretty much uh, produce it. And I've lived by awesome. And Anything how did you, how did you start it? Like, how did you start uh, Supreme Video Productions? Like, where did, where was your inspiration? Got it. So it all goes back to uh, when I was a young lad. Now, uh, I actually started shooting video in 1996. Um, like I said, we moved to Hawaii in 96 uh, with my parents. My father was in the Air Force, and we got stationed from California uh, to Hickam, actually. And um, when we moved here, my father decided to buy a new camera to kind of document, you know, our new life here in Hawaii. So he actually handed me down his old VHS, you know, that big shoulder mount VHS camera. He handed it down to me and he was like, yeah, just do whatever you want with it. So I really got into, you know, just filming whatever was going on. And I wasn't trying to be creative or anything, but around that time, I actually got really into skating. And I started bringing that camera around with me everywhere and I started filming skating videos actually. Um, fast forward, we moved back to California in 2000 and that's where I finished up high school and I still continued to shoot video. And it kind of transitioned into, you know, like high school stuff where we would <laughs> like house parties and fights and, you know, anything that like happens in high school. Did you document fights? <laughs> yeah. And I would just film everything and I was just kind of known as that guy with the camera. And I would upload the videos onto, uh, I think it was MySpace at the time. And it got really popular and everyone was like, hey, I'm throwing a, a house party. You need to come film my house party. So I would be the guy that would go and shoot house parties and make party videos. And one of my friends um, at the time, uh, his name's Donovan, he was a club promoter. And then he's like, hey, can you film my club events like you film, you know, the house parties? So that transitioned into, you know, um, uh, event type coverage. And then he also got into um, actual events. So I don't know if you're familiar with like cotillions and quinceañeras and, you know, those sort of things, which is similar to a wedding. I started filming events. That's, 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 those are very California events, you know, yeah. but go on. <laughs> yeah. So I started filming like events and parties and birthday parties, you know, more formal uh, events. And then um, I met a professional skater uh, by the name of Vinnie Minton who saw my stuff on, on Friendster and, or MySpace. And then he um, 
said, hey, do you want to come film with us? And I thought he meant like skating videos. And I was like, you know, this is like my idol. I couldn't believe that he was wanting me to like work with him. I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And then he's like, no, actually we're filming weddings. Like we don't actually make money making skating videos. We do weddings full time. And um, so he introduced me to weddings. I did that for a few years in California before I moved to Hawaii. And um, once I moved to Hawaii in 2009, I was able to go full time weddings um, by 2010. And I've been shooting weddings full time ever since. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and bring up uh, one of the wedding videos that you recently made. Uh, I remember when I was looking through it, it was very beautifully made. Actually, it's over at the Royal Hawaiian. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. Yeah. OK, so let's see if we can bring it up. And talk about, you know, the like the wedding industry, the challenges that you ran into as far as, you know, focusing on that initially when you started Supreme Video Productions. So when I first started, things were actually really easy for me. I feel like I came into Hawaii with a different style that not everyone was producing. And it was so easy for and I was coming in at a really low price point because I was just starting out. So um, my first year, I, I think I booked like eight weddings. And my second year, I booked like 38 weddings. And then from there, it just kept growing to where I was getting over at least one wedding a week. Um, and my business just kind of took off. And um, I think one of the challenges that kind of I learned about business was that I'm not a I wasn't a business owner. I didn't know anything about business. I just knew how to shoot and edit videos. And that's all I knew. So I ended up having to learn the business side of things where I was like, hey, I need to create contracts and I need to have invoices and I need to have uh, a team and I need um, to manage this team. And, you know, there's all of these, I need to create systems, you know what I mean? So that way I'm not reinventing the wheel every time I book a client and um, streamline my business. So the first years were uh, great, but they were also probably the most difficult because I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know bookkeeping. I didn't know taxes, none of that. So I, um, you know, I went through that um, up until I honestly think like 2015, 2016. Wow. That's when I was like, hey, I need to really kind of get this stuff figured out. And um, that was kind of around the same time where I was just getting a little bit burnt out with weddings, you know, shooting them every week. And um, I was even helping shoot for other companies. So I was shooting, you know, multiple weddings and um, in a week and it just kind of took its toll on me and there's just a lot of stress. And I think one of the things that really pulled me out of that funk was I ended up hiring uh, some great editors that really helped me out. They helped me clean up my backlog of uh, all the edits that, you know, all the weddings that we filmed, they just had all this huge backlog of uh, weddings that I had to deliver that I was running late on. Uh, they really like, honestly saved me and saved my business. And if it wasn't for them, I, I probably wouldn't, I've still been shooting weddings that probably would have just given up. But um, that was sort of kind of the biggest uh, lesson for me was just learning how to actually operate an actual business and not just, it's not just a hobby that I'm getting paid for. I need to treat it like a business. Right. Um, I know when we were talking about the wedding industry the other day, you talked about the challenges of, you know, catering to just weddings. And on top of that, like with everything going on in the pandemic, could you talk a bit more about that? Say that again, just catering to weddings and then- the, Yeah, so what are, the, what are the challenges that you ran into as far as um, just focusing on weddings or initially focusing on just weddings as far as your video production company goes? Oh, got it. So as time goes on, and my wedding business and as the you know industry evolves um, and just equipment in general was just being a lot more affordable. There's just a lot more companies that were popping up. And as I established myself in Hawaii as a, a cinematographer, you know, my rates would uh, increase and, you know, along with our quality and our, and the value and, you know, my team was growing, but, you know, you have these newer, companies that are just like kids out of high school that just got a DSLR camera that are so affordable now and you know they're just wanting to produce content or videos and um, they're just doing it on the super cheap so the competition uh, really came up a lot in Hawaii the pricing really went down it was almost like a race to the bottom everyone was kind of undercutting everyone and you had to really push your brand as like you know um, 
how can I say it? Like worth it, I guess, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the quality of the product is, you know, it's worth it. And then the other things that I started running into is just trying to find staffing. You know, um, one of the great things I love about Hawaii is that I feel like we are all peers though. We're not really competing with each other. There's plenty of work to go around when it comes to weddings. However, with that being said, and we'll even help each other. Like I said, I, I'll shoot for other companies if they were double booked or if they just needed someone to man a camera, I'm, I'd love to just show up and shoot. And it kind of worked that way with a lot of the companies. But because of that, we were all kind of like using all the same shooters or sharing the same people. And, and sometimes when during the busy seasons, it's really difficult to find <laughs> someone to help shoot a wedding for you, you know? So um, that's kind of one of the things. And the other thing too is, you know, you'll, you'll train someone your style and you'll teach them everything you know. Um, hoping that they'll work with you for as long as possible, but then they decide that just want to go off and do their own thing. So it's like, you're almost training your quote unquote competition. Um, so it's just this never ending cycle of teaching and, you know, shooting. And, and I think the other big thing too, is I think we discussed it was that we don't have return clients you know, with a wedding video, it's a one-time client. They hire you just to shoot their wedding. It's not like they're going to hire you again to do something else. And especially if it's a destination couple. So you're constantly having to market to new clients and resell, like sell to new clients. And and it's like a vicious cycle of just, you know, marketing and selling and marketing and selling. And it's not like you have this clientele that you build up um that you can always just kind of like pull business from you're really your clientele is going to be the other vendors the other uh, the coordinating uh, the coordinators the photographers and the uh, venues those are the ones that you want to build the relationships with so that you can get um you know referrals for more business in the future okay um so we're about to go on break since we're at the can you believe this we're almost at the halfway mark mm-hmm. we actually are that's why we're going on break we're almost at the halfway mark um but when we return, we'll talk about how, uh, because of what you mentioned, right, the wedding industry having, you know, sort of like its limit, you've now um, diversified to go into YouTube videos. So when we come back, let's launch into that. And then you can talk about creating content for that. So people who are watching can learn from your experiences and see whether or not they want to do that. So we are going on break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee with Kathleen Lee Consulting. And today we have Philip Lemoyne of Supreme Video Productions, a cinematographer who veered from just focusing on weddings to now going into YouTube content. So Philip, when we left off, you were talking about the challenges that the wedding, wedding, there you go, there's the stutter. The wedding industry ran into, um, even before the pandemic, right? Like uh, repeat clients are a little bit hard because ideally you'd only want to get married once. Um, And so now you delved into YouTube videos. So tell us about that. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, it was one thing to have like uh, individual clients and it was difficult to, you know, resell. But I think the other thing I forgot to mention was that I'm creating one product and then once I sell it, it's gone. Um, I made the income and I'm not making any more money off of it. And I started learning more, well, as I learned more about business and reading more books about business, I started learning about, I found out about the term passive income and um, basically creating a product or an item or, you know, content 
that can continually make continuously make money. And YouTube, one of those pro, uh, was one of those things that I can make um, um, that kind of income with. So I wanted to make a YouTube channel for a long time, and I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I kind of just threw everything on the wall, and then whatever stuck, I decided to go with, and it just happened to be cooking videos. So Let's I go ahead and prompt that out real quick. Um, so you have a cooking video that you shared with us. If we can get that on there, so people have an idea of one of the many videos that we've done. Today like, okay, uh, talk about beer, the video beer, or the cooking beer, videos that you've made. Yeah. So I think the one thing I really want to point out is that I'm not a chef. I just enjoy cooking, and it's funny that I make cooking videos on YouTube and it's creating income. And I just kind of want to point out the fact that you don't have to be a pro at what you know you're talking about. I say just talk about what you're genuinely interested in and share it with people. And uh, cooking, I love cooking, and and I just started just sharing some recipes, and um, it kind of just took off. Um, and I just kind of like doubled down on the cooking content once COVID hit because I weddings stopped completely. They still have stopped, and I just have all this free time I was like I'm just gonna go you know double down on YouTube and I did that uh this year just producing as much cooking content as I could and my channel just kept growing and growing and growing and it's just it's honestly crazy I just I I can't believe how much it has grown and how much income that I've been bringing in doing something that I already do for free you know just just happen to be posting it online so um it's great Okay, and then you had also talked about um, how you deviated. Well, in addition to making cooking videos, it dawned on you that it would be also useful to create videos on how to make videos. So <laughs> go over that. So as I was creating these videos, I would join a lot of Facebook groups with like YouTube cooks, right? That would just make YouTube videos. And I just found out there's there's a whole group of people there's like hundreds of thousands if not millions of people out there that are just like me that love to cook love to film it and then just share it on youtube and i would share my videos in in, in those groups and then they would always ask me questions like oh how did you get that shot or how did you do this or what are you using for lighting what's your camera and all that and i was like you know i'll just start making videos with videos on how i make my cooking videos and um that ended up really taking off and I ended up creating my own community of uh, I call it YouTube cooking creators. It's a Facebook group that I have that um, it's basically just trying to educate people on how to shoot cooking videos. I, like I said, I'm not a chef, but I am a professional a cinematographer and I know how to uh, I know how to film. So I feel a lot more comfortable sharing my experience uh, with shooting video than I do cooking. And if there's a way that I can combine the two and uh, you know, help other people and, and potentially turn it, help them turn it into a business and potentially turn that into income. I feel like that's a huge win. I'm, I'm getting to do what I love, helping other people make money doing what they love. So I think that's, I think the real win in this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your video helped me out. Let's, let's put up the how-to video, which actually not only applies to cooking videos, but great videos in general. So let's see if we can play that. Um, and, and while that's going up, look, tell us about some tips that you, you know, have given in this video or what you wanna to share to people when it comes to creating content for either YouTube or any social media media. I think one of the uh, biggest tips is that you don't need to have all the fancy gear. Um, actually, this video that, I'm sh that we're showing here is a, five part series on how to make YouTube cooking videos with just your phone. And I think the biggest tip that I have is that you don't need all the fancy stuff to get started. Just get started with what you have. And if your only camera is your phone, uh, you can do it with a phone. So I just give some tips in this video on, you know, some of the other things that I'd recommend investing in like a tripod and maybe a microphone to get better, uh, more stable shots and better audio. And yeah, just a few tips on, you know, how to, pretty much produce, film a video, how to edit the video, how to create thumbnails, and even how to upload your video onto YouTube. So even though these videos are made for uh, cooking videos, uh, they'll definitely work for any type of video that you're interested in making. Yeah, absolutely. As, as I learned today, uh, <laughs> walk us through the process of what exactly goes into making a video, even if it's made with just 
someone's phone, wow. like how your video kind of went over that. So walk us through just to give people an idea that coming up with content, it's not just you propping up the phone and then hitting record if you want to make good ones anyway. Yeah, it's definitely, it's like a full-time job. It's a lot of work and that's why not everyone is doing it. You know, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? So it's definitely a process. And I think the more time you spend planning your videos, the less time you'll spend shooting and the less time you'll spend editing. If you just put your camera up and you start talking and you don't know what you're talking about, you're gonna have this long video that you're gonna have to trim down. Or you might even forget some of the things that you needed to say. Um, so my first process is uh, I create a script. I write down exactly what I wanna say and, and what I'm gonna say and what I'm gonna shoot. And then I create a shot list, you know, on what the, the shots that I'm going to get. And then that way, once I hit record on my camera, um, I know exactly what I need to do, what I need to say, and I can just pump it out. And then um, once you're done filming, the next process would be, you know, to go through the editing, which is really the longest and most tedious part. And that's where you can get really nitpicky with it. But that's also where you can kind of clean up all of your stutters and, you know, stumbles. And maybe some of your shots weren't great where you can, you know, throw in some photos or something like that. And then I think the real big one is how you position your videos online. So just making sure you have a really good title, a thumbnail that is uh, enticing to make someone want to click on it. And yeah, just making sure you tag and share that video uh, everywhere possible. That way it just kind of gets some great traction uh, once you put it online. I think we have maybe five, five more minutes. Are you able to go over how to monetize that content? Um, and then go over to uh, what your goals are moving forward from like from now until, you know, through 2021 and beyond. Because I know you wanted to, uh, you are already expanding your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I think one of the big things is you get paid off the views with YouTube. For every 1,000 views, you get anywhere between $2 and uh, $50. It just depends on what your niche or your uh you know video topics are on but in order to make money off of youtube you need to have at least 1,000 subscribers um that's kind of like the uh, minimum requirement and then once you got that it pretty much just automatically uh enables ads that can play on your videos i think one of the big tips that i would give is that you want to create videos that people are actually searching for and you want to create videos with content that is helping people um, it's a lot easier to get discovered if you're a solution to a problem that people are searching for compared to just like, hey, look at my life in Hawaii or look at my life, look how cool, I, look at all the cool stuff I do. No one's really interested or searching for that, especially if you're nobody like me. So you have to um, get people on your channel first by, you know, creating content that people, looking, uh, that people are searching for. Be the solution to someone's problem. The other thing I want to mention is it doesn't have to be YouTube. It could be a podcast. It could be a blog. It could be anything. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is drive traffic to some sort of um, online um, platform that you're comfortable with. Um, maybe you like writing or maybe you don't want to be on camera and, and you want to do a, a podcast where they can see ads. Um, but I think the big thing is uh, the views and everything is the worst way to make money. The best way, uh, there's other ways like affiliate marketing, sponsored uh, posts, um, you can sell products. Like I could sell like a cookbook, for example. There's all kinds of ways that you can make money on YouTube or online in general. And I would re really recommend diversifying, you know, the uh, way that you do make money because one day YouTube could just say, hey, we're not paying our creators anymore. And you're all lost out of your income. So you wanna make sure that you have other income uh, sources um, that you can, you know, pull money from. Uh, Very well, sound advice, actually. Um, any final thoughts or words that you want to share with people out there? One final thought I would say is that you only have one life and you only have so much time in a day and so much time in a year. And you have the opportunity to now's like more than any time ever that you can do what you want and make money offline. You know what I mean? And if you're able to just learn how to share your experiences and what you're familiar with, helping other people, you can create income and you can have the freedom to do anything you want. And I just think, um, yeah, I don't know. You just got to do it, you know? So you just got to kind of take that jump and um, just stay consistent 
and set goals and stick to it and it'll all pay off. Wise words, Philip. Uh, if people would like to get a hold of you, how do they do that? What is your contact info? Um, you can check me out on Instagram, probably my best one. It's just my first name, underscore, and then last name on Instagram. Or you can check out my website, uh, philiplemoyne.com. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Or oh, on my YouTube channel, the YouTube backslash. <laughs> that's uh, right. Yeah. We're on here because of your YouTube channel. Yes, yeah, YouTube please. Channel. Uh, Direct people to your YouTube channel. Where, where is it? It's just youtube.com backslash and then my name, Philip Lemoyne. Awesome. Thanks, Philip, for joining us today. We went over creating useful content for online mediums. This has been Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and we do want to thank Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii. We had Eric helping us out today for making this program possible. Thank you, everyone. And this, if you were not able to catch this on live stream, this will be available on YouTube as well. So. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining us. Happy holidays.